Good morning. Thanks, Liz. Thanks for being here. We're excited that you are here and we're going to talk a little bit about family engagement in PBIS implementation. I am Erin Campion and I'm a patent consultant out of the West office. I'm the family consultant from the West. I'm also the parent coordinator for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Initiative in the central office. So I, I bridge two offices. And Jen? I am also out of the patent West office and I am the family engagement lead. I have been an educational consultant for a little over eight years at Patton West, and family engagement is one of my passions. I would say I have more than one, but it's up there. So my history in education is I started out as a music therapist and then went to be a speech language pathologist, then supervisor of at special education, and then I got my doctorate in special education with a focus on family engagement. And I'm also mom to three boys, all of who have some sort of IEP. So they all have GIEPs. And then I have one son who also has an IEP for special education. So, you know, they are very complicated and busy. And I always think that I learn more from them than I do from my actual you know, degree, and my actual job, because they, they keep me on my toes. But I'm really happy to be here on Coaches Day talking family engagement. Thanks, Jen. And I'm the family lead out of Central, and I'm also a classroom teacher 20 years and a mom of four so with the IEP, so we're, we're all in it from the ground up. But we want to take a minute to talk, have you give us some information. Why are you attending this session and or what do you already know about family engagement in PBIS? So if you'll take 10, 15 seconds, type it into the chat. Let's, it'll, it'll go fast because I know there's a lot of folks in this session, but just give us an idea. Why are you here or what do you already know or even what do you want to know? Love it. Katie, what a way to start. Thank you. You should have a parent rep on your PBIS team. Yes. Excellent. Let's give us some other answers. All means all. Wonderful. Yes, it is important that families understand and how to incorporate them. Looking for some ideas on how they can become active participants. Can't do it without the family involved. Looking for more ideas. Well, we hope to give you some of those hints. Relationships, isn't that a great way to frame it? Yes, if you're just beginning to implement PBIS, going in it with family engagement from the start and building that into your structure is such a great way to guarantee success and to make things easier. Yep, we want to get everyone on board. Positive relationships. There's that word again. I love seeing that word a couple times. We can always strengthen the family piece, and that is that is so true. We can always strengthen it. Making sure they understand it. They can support it. Excellent. You guys are awake for 9 o'clock, 9.15 on a Friday morning. Outstanding. Well, we want you should have family engagement be a, a real focus of your um, PBI system. So family engagement is regarded as a best practice in education. Decades of research has shown that parent involvement is a powerful influence on children's educational success. Another why, because there's real outcomes, more specifically when families are involved in their child's education. Data indicates increased student achievement, improved attendance and behavior, improved social emotional skills, and increased graduation rates. The data and the why is there. Jen's going to talk to you through this data. Yeah, uh, family engagement is a best practice in education, and it is an evidence-based practice. When Erin said there are decades of research behind family engagement, she is not kidding. We're looking at around 40, 50 years of a lot of research that has gone into family engagement, what it means, what it is, what it does for our students. So all of these items outlined here are from different studies that discussed all of the positive attributes of family engagement when it comes to education. So we see reduced dropout rates, higher graduation rates, increased student achievement, and student achievement can be measured in lots of ways. So in this particular study, we were looking at math and reading scores, but there are many other studies that looked at achievement in a different way, whether it's high school graduation or finding a job after school, post-secondary training. We also see 
reduced absenteeism, better student-teacher relationships. Now, as I go through these, think about your goals for PBIS within your school. Why did you decide to pursue PBIS? I bet there's overlap between these things. And, oh, I, we've lost the PowerPoint. And I think there's overlap between these elements and what you wanted to do with PBIS in the first place, because I'm sure you were looking at improved behavior, better relationships, increased student achievement, and we see that all with family engagement as well. Um, a couple other uh, things that we'll see on here is better attitudes towards learning. The, our kids want to go to school if they have their families engaged in education. More cultural confidence for our, our teachers because they really get to know their families and, and improve trust in schools. All right. So the why. Erin, are you on or did you get knocked off? I'm here, but I seem you to be are. frozen. <laughs> okay, well, I, th I think you're moving now. Am I? Um, you are. So if you want to take the next slide, but if you drop sure. off, I'll jump in there. No problem. Perfect. So <laughs> when parents are engaged and involved in their children's education, this research comes strictly direct from Henderson and Matt. And one, we want to hit one highlight real quick it this is this is their research so we're being you know honest to their research when parents are engaged just a quick inclusive conversation we tend to use the word families parents is the language that's used in IDEA but when you look further into that um, guidelines it is defined very broadly that it's not just the biological parents it can include you know guardians and grandparents and caretakers so even though this research uses parents you will see throughout our presentation we use families so when families are involved their children's grades go up they attend school more regularly they're more likely to enroll in higher level programs they're more likely to graduate and go on to college they're more excited and positive about school and learning and they have fewer discipline issues inside and outside of class and, and we want to repeat those last lines mm -hmm. they're more <laughs> excited and positive about school and learning because that's why you're here and they have fewer discipline issues inside and outside of class Yes, and if you leave this presentation thinking, I want to learn more about family engagement, Henderson and MAP are a great place to start because they were really seminal researchers when it comes to this work. And again, they have spent decades researching this topic, so they have great stuff out there if you're looking for more. And if you are looking for more, we encourage you to take five minutes and we guarantee that it will repeat, 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 repeat <laughs> what we've just shared with you. This is a joy to present because all the research supports us again and again and again. And nationally, family engagement is known as a rocket ship. That is, uh, it is used, this analogy and this visual is used over and over again across the nation that what you're doing is that great rocket ship that, that you want to spread, that you, that you, that's going into the horizons, but it only gets there if it has the boosters on the back. And that's what family engagement is. Family engagement makes what you do go farther, higher, faster, and longer. The rocket ship, we want to get it into space. We want it in the atmosphere, but it only gets there with that extra power. And family engagement is the power that takes what you do and makes it last and stay and have a really um, longer impact for all of our students and families. So my son was really, he for a while there, he was like, do I want to work harder or smarter? And I'm like, well, you want to work smarter. And family engagement is working smarter. It takes what you do and it makes it go, you get a bigger bang for your buck. So we really want to stress that it is the rocket ship. It's the boosters on the back of, of the ship. To do family engagement, however, you need to have core beliefs. So, you know, in your own mind, in your own school, is this what you're putting out there explicitly and implicitly. All families have dreams for their children and want what is best for them. Do you really believe that? And what if it's different than what the school sees or what the administration wants or the teacher sees? All families do have dreams for their children and they want what's best for them. And you need to come in with that core belief and build your program from that belief. All families have the capacity to support their children's learning. That's a core belief. Just as we talk about all of our students can learn, all families have the capacity to support learning. Families and school staff are equal partners. And that's one of those ones where sometimes we say it, but we don't implement that. And that's not an explicit 
expression of what we really believe. So take time to look at your system, take time to look at your school. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, that that's really clear. And the last one, the responsibility for cultivating and sustaining partnerships among school, home and community rests primarily with school staff, especially school leaders. And that's an important part we want to bring home. We want to look at, go ahead, John. I, I'm going to interrupt because we had such a great quote in the chat that I just wanted to bring it up, which was from Katie, who said school climate directly impacts students' attitudes towards learning. And that school climate issue is a huge one. So everything we reviewed on that last slide about those core beliefs that we have to not only embrace, but enact in our school programs, it all has to do with school climate, with school culture, with school attitudes, beliefs. And without those, you cannot have a truly successful family engagement program and you can't have a truly successful school. So I wanted to point that out. And unfortunately, climate and culture are harder to change than protocol calls and policies, right? I mean, that change of attitudes, of feelings, of philosophies, of ethics and beliefs is much more difficult. Um, but we're going to talk about how you can use practices to build this kind of climate change within your school. Thanks, Jen. Point that out. It's great. So one of the things we're talking terms, we've already hit a little bit on, we use families and not parents because we want to be more inclusive and that is a more appropriate term. We also are very careful about the term involvement versus engagement. And our goal is engagement. For many years, the focus or, or the, the level of, of standard was involvement. And involvement is one-way communication. It's what you're getting out. But engagement is two-way communication. What are you getting back? Are you actually trying to get information back? Is that part of your system? Is that part of your process? Or are you just focused on what you send? Involvement is explaining the decisions and the procedures and the policies, but engagement is co-creating and defining those with the family, having the family at the table, getting that input. Does this make sense to you? Is this a priority to you? Do you see this as a problem? Involvement is very school centralized. Come to us, come to us, come to us. Whereas engagement is very family centric. How can we best support you? Where's the, how do we make this in, more inclusive and more inviting and go to where the families are? Involvement focuses on attendance. And, and we hear that all the time. We had 45 people show up. Our, our goal is not who's showing up. You know, attendance is good for the students. It's not how we're looking at family engagement. Family engagement is an approach to be able to say across the system, this is what we are doing to engage, not in a one-time, one-done Thursday night at 6 p.m. We had 45 people, but this is how we're getting the feedback. This is how we're doing the shared decision-making. This is how they're at the table. And involvement is very volunteer and event-based. Whereas engagement is really focuses more on collaboration. It's not event-based. It's, it's a discussion. It's a relationship. I loved seeing that in the chat. How many times did we see that in the chat? And really changing our view from family involvement to family engagement and how you look at that affects what you do. So we're going to, we want some more chat. You guys are wonderful. Family engagement is not about attendance at events or about families being at the school. It consists of all the ways that schools support and encourage families to be actively involved in their children's education. Ultimately, schools build a bridge, creating authentic educational partnerships between families and schools. And we have that in our definition. Here's what we use across the state. Family engagement promotes equitable partnerships among schools, families, and communities to actively advance student achievement through shared commitment, decision-making, and responsibility. So here's your turn. Can you give an example in the chat of what maybe your PBIS system is doing that's family involvement, but can you take it the step higher? And what is your school doing that's family engagement? So let's see what some of your ideas are. How are you taking that broader look of shared partnerships, shared decision-making, two-way communication, what are you doing now? I know we know there's good stuff being done or recognize that we're only at the family involvement level. So give us some feedback. What's happening at your school?
Yep, we're hoping to get you some ideas. Yep. Okay, parent volunteers. Mm -hmm. Involvement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Our school's not there. And even knowing where you are is so beneficial because that gives you an action plan to start with. Frequent communication, hoping to take some steps in the right direction. Brochures, parents help. Oh, co-building, co-planning on a building. That was great. Surveys, nice. Mm -hmm. I hope you go back and go through that chat. There's a lot of good stuff in there. And then maybe we can even save that and get that out. So wonderful. Thank you. Children are the priority. Change is the rea reality, but collaboration is the strategy. And family engagement is about collaboration. If you leave, leave nothing else after this session is that we want to move beyond involvement. We want to get into engagement and it takes collaboration. This is a great visual from the IRIS um, Center that kind of sums up what family engagement is. It's building positive relationships. You, you've gotten that so many times. I've seen that in the chat. It's getting to know families. Families come with a fund of knowledge. And there's another term that, that if you're in the family engagement world, you want to know that fund of knowledge. Getting to know what your families are bringing to the table. What fund of knowledge are they? do they already have that's inherent in their structure? And how do you as a school find out what that fund of knowledge is and collaborate with them so that they can share that so you can build on that fund of knowledge so that they can support their students, their children, and meaningfully involving them. We are problem solvers as teachers, aren't we? We come in and we see what's wrong, we, we see what they don't know, and we go in and we wanna, we wanna teach them, we wanna show them. We, it's that shared decision making, it's letting go and having the family have a say in it is a little hard for us. And that's something that we really wanna work on meaningfully involving families. We also want to just make you aware of home culture. Being culturally responsive is very important. And we think a lot of times it, um, in terms of ethnic or racial or age or gender or religious cultures. But there's also a home culture that a lot of times we forget that needs to be considered when we're establishing a welcoming environment, that when we're building these things, there are parent and family considerations that need to be recognized in order to build relationships and making sure that you're aware that there is such thing as a home culture. School personnel can build successful partnerships if they're aware that School is only one part of a family's daily life. They have a different job. They have other relationships. They have other priorities. They have other stresses and concerns. This is not what they do eight hours a day. So schools need to be aware that this just represents one part of their life. And we need to family see school and education through the lens of their own educational history. For a lot of families, there were there might have been stress and, and anxiety and, and unsuccessful outcomes. And you need to be cognizant that they're bringing that to the table. And then and often families see themselves as outsiders. The school personnel and the administration, they're very comfortable in that building. But for a family, that is not where they're the most comfortable. And we get to retire. And at the end of the day, we get to close our doors. And on vacation, we, we get like that two-week Christmas vacation or one-week Christmas vacation. Families don't. They are involved in this education process every holiday, after four o'clock, on the weekends, and for the rest of their lives. So we need to remember that there is a home culture. And we need to be respectful and aware of any meetings or any um, demands or even expectations that we put on a family that they're coming with their own culture just because they're home and not school. Jen? Yeah, I think uh, remembering that a family's perspective might be different than ours. We might have a vision for what we think our students should be achieving, should be um, embracing in school, but that's not always the same at home. And just thinking about the many, many different viewpoints that that can occur within different home cultures is really important. And I think too, like building that positive view of let, yes, we see differences here. We're gonna embrace this diversity instead of run it down. Um, 
and really meeting people where they're at is one thing we really promote in family engagement is we need to always be thinking positively about the contributions our families can make. We kind of alluded to that in that core beliefs slide, didn't we? Um, we don't want to create an us versus them mentality, like our families believe this, but we believe this. Um, we really need to be looking at those differences of opinion and recognizing, yeah, we all come from different places. We have different factors in our lives that are influencing our decisions. And just, you know, again, really celebrate that work with that. Don't make anything in us versus them. Don't, you know, downplay the contributions by families or put families down. Sometimes we hear, oh, that family is crazy. You know, let's <laughs> change our language. Let's change our attitude towards towards families and really look at them as, oh, these are people that are really involved in their children's everyday life. And we can't do this without them. You know, right. they're vital. So, right. And you, you all, we often hear like the uninvolved, uninvolved family. And actually that's really not possible because they are there every day after school on the weekends during the summer, they are involved. They may not yeah. be involved in the way you are looking at it mm -hmm. and what your priorities is, but they are involved. This is not their job. This is our job, but not their job. So we have a quote here about data. We want data. How do we make a change? Where do we get started? Well, district family engagement staff recognize that data about family engagement are a lever for change, but they realize they still have farther to go to develop meaningful indicators of their work and data systems. Evaluation often hinge on persuading teachers, principals, and other district offices to take data collection related to family involvement seriously. We choose family engagement. We, we've already addressed that. So what kind of data are you getting for family engagement? And here's the last quote, that what, the last line of the quote that Westmoreland says, having the district-wide internal capacity, not just to collect data, but also to use it as information feeds into planning and improvement. So we wanna talk about family engagement data so that you know where you are and you know where you're going. But real quick, what data does your family, your school collect about family engagements? We saw someone had a survey in there, mm -hmm. but have you thought about family engagement, not just as what you're producing, but what you're getting back? So how is your school getting back data from your families? Let's see what you have in the chat. And the data itself is representative of, the, of that two-way conversation, right? How we're not only informing families, but getting information back. And then it's not enough to get the information back, is it? We have to use it. Yeah. <laughs> we have to apply yeah. it. We have to analyze it. So, yeah, it's, I see a lot of surveys in here, needs assessments. And then we saw some requests for people to share, and we are going to yeah, share some. <laughs> there is that Liz said that she has, and we have put several resources, including some needs assessments on there. Mm -hmm. Phone calls. I love that. That's mm -hmm. great data. But what are you doing with that data? Very mm -hmm. nice. I like the dojo communication as well. So for those of you who don't know what it is, is it class dojo? It's a uh, basically a communication system back and forth that often focuses on behavior, but it all the Families of the kids in the classroom are able to get these messages about how their kids are doing at school. So it's sort of a constant communication. And I think it can be two way as well. Right, guys. So it's the teacher sending out messages to the families, but the families can communicate back. Remind is another one that we've seen families use back and forth. Um, it's a way to have a protected texting number that you can exchange information. And that's really great. All right. Well, let's look at some of the data that we're going to, these are great. Mm -hmm. I hope, I hope you're writing some of this down, but some of the things that we want to look at is the secret shopper motif, mission possible, needs assessments, and the PBIS family engagement rubric from the Ohio State University. So our first, if you don't have any way of getting data and you're interested in getting data and we need data, that's really where we should start. Think of the secret shopper and, and have you ever had families, given them a questionnaire or given them a brochure, given them something to go through the school with the mind of how welcoming is our school? Please look at our school, look at our doorways, look at our signs, look at our walls, talk to the, you know, is it a welcoming school? 
And don't tell your secretaries and don't tell the security and don't tell folks they're doing it, but it's that secret shopper. And when you have a new family come, and you have a new student to the school, do you take five minutes after you've met the family and the student and say, what was your first impression? Could you just tell us what your feeling was or what your sense was or what you noticed? Are you utilizing the families that are coming for the first time, families that are having their first meeting at your school or families that have been there and said, here, walk through this. I work um, in the field of deaf and hard of hearing and I have done secret shoppers often for access. And I will have schools come and say, can you walk through our building? Can you try to come in for a meeting and let us know how the access is? Well, it's the same thing for family engagement. Find some of your parent champions, find some of your, your families that'll give you an honest answer and say, could you walk through and let us know what, what kind of cultural do you, do you see things in different languages? Do you see things that incorporate families of all, you know, all diversity? Is it welcoming? So utilizing that secret shopper motif, like we've never had that. We've never had families come in and give us that feedback of what's your first impression? How easy is it to connect? Think about that. Think about utilizing. Jen? Yeah, I was going to say that this is something that people find a little complicated sometimes, especially in our schools now where we're really focused on safety right? And safety is really, really important. So we need to have our doors locked for schools. We need to have a security guard. Many of our schools have metal detectors. And these aren't bad things. These are all from the place of how safe is our school. And in PBIS, that's one of your biggest concerns, right? You have a safety plan. It's part of what you do is in within the framework. And so we're not saying within, you know, uh, an activity like this that we want to, um, not have those safety features, which can seem like a barrier, can't they? You know, you walk into a school, oh, I've got to go give my driver's license to the security guard and he's got to scan it and I get this little picture and then I have to go through the metal detector. And for families, it can seem like, oh, bummer, it's so hard to get in here. So I feel like our staff then has to be 200% more welcoming and enthusiastic and also we have to sort of explain why we're doing mm -hmm. these yes. things, right? That we have to say, this is because we love your kids and we want them to feel safe and we want them to be secure in this environment. So this is the onus behind having these, these elements that might seem like barriers. So I love this secret shopper activity because it would it really helps get an honest opinion from a family. And if a family is like, oh, I, I have to go through this screening process, and I feel like I wasn't welcome, then we can explain the importance of, of why we need to do that. And that it really comes from love and not from anywhere that's trying to keep them out. So it's such a great activity, Erin. I love this one. And it's explaining the why. We, I, we agree. We are not having it removed. But are you explaining the why? And is the why understandable? And is that giving the right message? Same thing with your yeah. social media and your website. I, I was, yes. It was a joy to be part of a focus group where they brought in a group of, of family members and they had us go through their website with them. And they asked us real questions like, how how does this look to you? And is this easy? And and if websites a lot of times are not easy and to really get a family saying I don't understand this yes I you understand oh you click here click here click here but when you have someone coming from the outside that that you know that the Joe on the street that can be really powerful in and even with your brochures or your information you're sending home do you have a focus group or you have family members that are not involved in creating it do they understand what you created so thinking about your social media thinking about your website Jen Another thing is the educational portal. So by raise of hand, how many of you use an educational portal to keep track of grades, assignments, things that families can check? Okay, I see a lot of raised hands. Educational portals are great. Oh, loving all the hands that are coming up. It's great information that's shared on a portal. It really, really is. But sometimes people don't ha know how to use the portal. <laughs> so having a focus group like this or a secret shopper who's learning how to use this portal for the first time and can kind of share what was hard about it. Well, you know, what didn't I understand when I was trying to register? I've got to say, I still learn things every day about the portal. Um, I was trying to look at one of my son's grades to determine like, what is he doing that he has such a, you know, I think a low grade in this class and I don't understand where it's coming from. And so I was talking to the principal and she's like, you know, if you click here, you can see every day the breakdown of what he's doing in class. And I was like, really? And I mean, I've used this for five years and I wasn't 
aware of that. So that's another place where you can check and see, are people really understanding how to fully engage with that system? Because isn't the information wonderful? It really, really is but not if people don't know how to get to it. So looking really deeply into how people are engaging with those different technologies is important. And not only does it give you great information, but it builds family engagement. How is that? Because you're bringing families in saying, we are partners on this. We are equal on this. We want to collaborate with you. With you. Can you help us? And there you're building, it's a, it's a BOGO. You're building family engagement and you're getting great information at the same time. So that first impression, that welcoming, having that secret shopper walk through to look at your culture, the, you know, having focus groups for your social media and your website's powerful. And then there's also this little trick called the one, two, three that, that I think is great. Anytime that you're with a family, anytime you have a family that actually shows up or comes or with a call, you take two minutes at the end and you ask them three questions. How did you find out about this? What convinced you to come or to explore this, inf this opportunity? And what can we do to help you and your child's education. So when you at the end of your end of your book night or at the end of a parent conference or whatever, how did you find out about this? What convinced you to come? Like, what, what, what was the, the caveat? What, what was, did we say or how did we phrase it? And what can we do to help you? There's three easy ways, three questions. It takes 30 seconds to a minute. And you don't want to let someone go out the door without getting good data from them. And by asking the one, two, three, you're getting data from every family or every time you make that connection. We also want to tell you that there's a link on our patent website, module one, which is called welcoming all families into the school community. And that's under our family engagement tab. And that deals with has a lot of these topics in it has a lot of steps to it. And it is linked in our references. And we can put that in as well. All right, the second we that was our secret shopper. The second tool is mission possible. It's a, it's in our module. And it's looking at your mission statement. Do you have a copy of your mission statement with you? Do you have what you have on your, it's probably on a wall somewhere in your school. What stakeholders are included in your school mission statement? Does it actively address that our mission for our school is collaborative partnerships? Does it explicitly state that families are part of those partnerships? And does it in any way reflect that families are equal partners. We, Jen and I work with a lot of schools and they say, well, it's implied. For families, there is, no, there is no such thing as implied. It needs to be explicit. We don't imply our instruction, it's explicit instruction. So look at your, that's a great way to start. What is our goal of our school? What's our mission? What are we putting out into the community? Look at what you're saying. And I'm sure it's all good intentions and we know that you love families and you wanna include them, but is it explicit in your mission statement, Jen? Yeah, I agree. We do get that a lot from schools saying, but I said educational partners and we, that means families, that's how we feel about our families. Your families don't always know that. So it does help to just put it out there uh, to say family engagement, to say family partnerships and make it really clear that you're valuing this collaborative effort between school and home. It does have to be pretty obvious for people to really understand what your intent was. So we oh, challenge you to look. You. You're, we challenge mm -hmm. you to look at your mission statements and really get a focus group, get a team of your admin, and address these questions. And there is that activity in the module. You'll see it in module one. So we've got our secret shoppers. We've got mission. You're looking at your mission statement. Looking at needs assessments. And we're, when we have two linked in our resources, these are just screenshots of them. We, the um, patent family engagement team does have a needs assessment based on family engagement that you can take with a team, that you can take with a group, that you can take with a focus group and look at what are we really doing for family engagement? Because like we said, we want the data, but are you making the effort to find it? We also include a family school partnership checklist, which is another needs assessment. So we want to make sure you know that both of those are available and they are on your on the Padlet. All right, so you need a piece of paper real quick. Number one through five, we have a quiz for you. I'll give you a minute to read the questions and write your answers. Who is responsible for building, growing, and maintaining family engagement? That's question one. Question two, what progress and action steps, whose progress and action steps, pardon me, whose progress and whose action steps are evaluated? 
Who needs to look at ways to improve and expand their family engagement? Who needs to change, adapt, and fit their methods of engagement to be more culturally and personally responsive? And who is paid, trained, and has work time for family engagement? And the answer is to all of those, it's the school. So many times that's one of the big misconceptions that we get in family engagement is the families need to do more. The families are not charged. They're not evaluated. They're not trained. It is not part of their job description. It's the schools. So we want to make sure that's another thing that you really bring back from this. I was going to say really quickly, Erin, if you could put those questions into the chat again, for some reason they disappeared in my chat, the one, two, three questions. Oh, they okay. Were there. And somehow for me, they disappeared. And I figure if it happened for me, it probably happened for somebody else as well. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And just to, you know, piggyback on what Aaron was saying. Yeah, we do get a lot of this um, kind of response where we're saying, well, if our families did more or if our families cared, well, we don't know, first of all, what is going on, on in our family's lives. Think about everything you have, in, have going on in your own family, right? In addition to working on things related to school, we also have to feed our children and do the laundry and give them hugs and, you know, correct them when they're making bad decisions. And right, there's a lot about our lives that's really complicated when you're in a family. It is the responsibility of the school to take these steps for family engagement. And we had a question in the chat from Katrina, how, you, how do you clarify and define school? School is a big big term, isn't it? Um, I would say that the school consists of all those educational partners within the school. So we're looking first of all at the administration. So I'm not sure how many of you on here are administrators. I know this is a coach's day. Oh, sorry. There's a noise in my background. I don't know if you can hear that. That's annoying. <laughs> um, but administration really takes the, the first step at establishing family engagement as a priority. So I would say that they're really representative of the school as far as the culture, but anybody else working at the school can engage families, the teachers, related service professionals, paraprofessionals, even like bus drivers, people who work in the cafeteria, we can all be working to engage families. I would include any of those educational partners within that list. And our goal really here is the understanding that at no time in family engagement do you evaluate the family. I'm going to say that one more time. At no time in family engagement are you evaluating the family. We are evaluating our efforts, our work, our reach out, our success in it. We are not evaluating families as good, bad, and otherwise. Families are families, and that is who they are. They are not that. They come as a family. We are not to evaluate them. It is our effort. Absolutely. So the last way to gather data, we've done the, you know, look at the focus groups at Secret Shop or give those, you know, surface surveys, but also look at your mission statement, also look at needs assessments. There is a wonderful tool that we wanted to get into your hands from the Ohio State University, and it's their PBIS Family Engagement Rubric. And we have a quick video, we're going to get to it real here, and hopefully it works, that they explain it, and then we're going to look at it. So let me give me a thumbs up if everyone has sound. and. We don't have sound yet, I don't think. Okay. Um, and no, no sound yet. Um, go back to the beginning. I it might have been starting. I heard little blips. Let me stop share and click one more time because I want to make sure you can hear it. Yeah. And let's try this again. That's why we always check. Sound. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports, or PBIS, represents your school's commitment to addressing student behavior through systems change. This video introduces school teams to PBIS family engagement rubrics. Your school is already communicating and working with families in many ways. This video will help your team answer the question, how can we engage families as full partners in our PBIS journey? These guides will help you to think more deeply about engaging families as keepers of important information about their children, 
as decision makers, volunteers, and as supporters at home to reinforce positive behaviors. The guides will also help your team to consider strategic community partnerships to strengthen your PBIS framework. Now we will review the Tier 1 rubric guide and point out elements within it. All three guides follow a similar format. Therefore, this information can be applied when using the Tier 2 and 3 rubric guides as well. This guide was designed to be used by a school's PBIS team at the beginning of their implementation of PBIS and on an annual basis to monitor growth. On the first page of the guide, you'll see the purpose of the rubrics, the intended participants, and brief instructions on using the rubric. To prepare, your team should identify a record keeper for your discussion and responses. As a team, review the PBIS Tier 1 Family Engagement Rubric. Notice the key areas on the left side of the rubric, communication, decision-making, volunteering, parenting and learning at home, and collaboration with the community. These are adapted from Dr. Joyce Epstein's Family Engagement Framework. At the top of the rubric, you will see levels one to four. The levels describe a progression of family engagement from level one, emerging practices, to level four, optimal practices. PBIS team members should read the descriptions at each level, one through four, for each key area, one key area at a time. Determine which level most closely represents your team's current practices. Discuss the perspectives of team members and come to consensus on the level that best represents your school for each of the key areas. Use the reflection questions and summary page to acknowledge and record evidence of successes for your team. As a team, decide which key areas you want to prioritize right now. The summary page in this document is included to guide your team discussion. Once your team has determined appropriate action steps and who will be responsible for carrying them out, include these action steps in your current school PBIS action plan. This rubric was written for the Ohio Department of Education by the Ohio Statewide Family Engagement Center in partnership with Ohio's PBIS network. Visit our website for more resources and fresh ideas to strengthen your school's partnership with families. All right, so I'm going to show you, we're going to do a different share screen here. And I want to, we want to get the rubric up here so that you can see it. And Jen's going to talk to us a little bit. Jen, are you? Yeah, um, so I am actually going to bring the rubric up on my screen as well, so Perfect. I can see it a little bigger. <laughs> Um, you know, are you going to share? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I could do a share. I think mine might be a little bigger. Okay, Here, let me you. do that because I had pulled that up. Share screen. Okay, and then I can kind of expand it. All right, so one of the challenges I've heard about measuring family engagement, I've I've heard this in the past, is that for a long time there weren't a lot of ways to measure family engagement like what you know what protocol do you use what kind of assessment well this one from ohio is really fantastic so we're gonna dive into it a little bit this rubric is built specifically for pbis so i i think it's something that you guys can all use a lot of you were saying we're just beginning pbis or we know we have the family involvement portion down, but we're not so sure about family engagement. This is a terrific way to be looking at uh, your family engagement and really measuring where do we need to make some improvement? Um, what are we doing great already? So this is divided into several key areas. We have communication up top, then decision-making, volunteering, parenting and learning at home, and collaboration with the community. So in that video you watched, they mentioned that this is based on the work of Dr. Joyce Epstein. Dr. Joyce Epstein is a phenomenal family engagement researcher. Again, if you want to learn more about family engagement, she's a great person to ask. And she uses a, a framework in which we note that families are engaged in learning in different ways. So families, in order to support their children's learning, they are parenting them and taking care of them at home so they can learn. They're supporting learning at home. They're communicating with the school district. They're helping make decisions in their child's life, whether those are based through the school or in the home environment. 
they're collaborating with the community and they're advocating for their child. So we base this particular rubric on all of those different hats that families wear, wear whenever they are supporting their students in education. So level one is that surface level. I would think of this as maybe more of the involvement phase, <laughs> like level one, level two, it's more of that one-way communication. Yeah, we're giving them information about PBIS. We're, you know, we're planning and we're making the matrix. We're not exactly involving families with that. Now, if we look at level three and four, which is cruising more towards actual engagement, families are informed of school activities in lots of ways so we can maximize how many families are going to be aware of and involved in PBIS. There are, I love this, year-round ongoing methods of listening to families. So encouraging that two-way communication, we're valuing their feedback. So we talked about the importance of not only getting data, but actually using it. So we're showing that we value it by taking it in, communicating it to the larger environment, using it to, to base our decisions upon. So you can see the continuum here. Um, take a moment and look at this. So I did put the link to it in the chat. And I'm just curious to know, let's look at something like decision-making. I'm just throwing one out there. Give us your number. Are you level one, two, three, or four? And don't be embarrassed either way. Many of us may be at level one. We're just getting started. I mean, <laughs> that's okay. But kind of being self-aware about where you're at. I'm curious to see what's in the chat. Okay. Okay, yeah, lots of level one. Level one, level two. I level think one, the level two, one. wonderful thing about the rubric is now that you can look and it's defined mm -hmm. and it's yes. not as vague. It's not that amorphous out there that you can say, this is where we are. So you pick as you go through the rubric, if decision making is what you really want to work on, mm -hmm. now you'd make your action plan. How do you take it from a level one to a level two? That's where you start. You, you get your team together and make sure there's families on that team. Get your focus groups. How do we take it from that? Or maybe your goal is more on the communication, but you get to decide what area you want, you feel needs to be next or ask your families, where do they feel it needs to be next? Yeah, and I like that you can use evidence for this. So what's hard about family engagement sometimes is it seems it's, related to feelings, which are hard to measure, <laughs> okay? They really, really are difficult. So sometimes when we think about family engagement, we're like, yeah, we're doing it. I don't know how to explain how we're doing it, but we are, I'm pretty sure. This really breaks it down and asks you to look for evidence. So for decision-making, like Aaron's example, level one, the PBIS team does not include family members. That's something obvious an evidence-based and database that we can figure out, oh yeah, we don't include family members. And then we can also see what it looks like as we kind of improve this, you know, as we provide opportunities for families to participate in PBIS planning. Yeah, we've moved up to level two, or we're encouraging group discussions about this, surveys, focus groups. We can see ourselves moving through the levels, which I think is so helpful. And I believe this could be a great tool for all of you in using this. So if you figured out your level one, that's okay, because we can move up, <laughs> we can right. move through the levels. And we now have ideas about how to move through the levels, whereas before it might have been something we had a hard time defining. So I love this document for that reason. And remember, we're always evaluating the school. Mm -hmm. We're not evaluating whether, the, you know, are we making meetings at, you know, on, on level three? Are we making meetings available at different times, in different places, in different ways? Can it be Zoom? Can it be virtual? Does it have to be in person? That's our job is to evaluate our efforts so that we can get more from family, so that we can yeah. make it more accessible and easy. We are not evaluating, well, this family only comes 25% of the time. Maybe we need to stop and look at how are we getting feedback from them? Do they work night shift? Do, is there a transportation issue? Are there, is there child care? You know, there's a lot of ways that we need to start being re reflective and creative so that we are opening doors for our families. And like we said, this is tier one. There's also one for tier two. Yeah. And there's also one one for tier three. And I do like the way this emphasizes the many, many ways we can engage families, not only with that, again, physical presence and 
hear a lot in family engagement is our families just don't come. Our families just don't come. And that's not the point. We would love to have families coming to school events. It makes us feel good. It builds morale. Absolutely. And, and we agree that that's a great thing. However, there are families that engage in many, many different ways. So they might be doing so from a distance and that's okay. The point is that we are working to find a way to engage all those families in all their different ways with all their different contributions. And that really is outlined very well in here. It's looking at all those different formats we can use to engage families. We're, we're so you know, embracing the universal design for learning with our students. We need to have that universal design of family engagement that we need to what barriers and obstacles can we take out of the environment? What can we give in many ways and, and allow feedback and, and not performance, but response in many ways from families. So we're, we're not just treating our, our, our students as individuals, which is great. We need to teach our do our families as individuals and have that universal design approach for our family engagement as well. All right, I'm going to stop my share, Aaron. All so right, you can pick and up then yours I will, again. Okay. So let me, oh, there we go. And these are the questions. Is everyone seeing it now? These are the questions. Do you have families involved in your PBI system? How are you involving families in your PBIS approach? How are you working to increase the engagement of those families? How are you conveying? information and progress and how are you receiving it's often that number five that sometimes we 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 hesitate on or we don't get but we need to be really adamant and put a lot of effort in how are we receiving information i want to go back just one slide here and there we go this is a nice visual continuum of engaging family members from just inviting them to serve to informing them to providing opportunities for two-way communication. Here's where we really get on that family engagement is that now we're getting past involvement into engagement to encouraging frequent communication. And then it can lead to who knows what else. The doors are wide open once you have built that relationship and you've really made those efforts that we get information in different ways. Some call us, some text us, some show up, some write a note, some we see in passing. You know, So there's a, a nice continuum of how you can engage your families. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think, again, figuring out how to go from one way to two way, because mm -hmm. sometimes we can be pretty good about, OK, we sent home a magnet and it has the matrix on it and the expectations. And that's really, really good because we've informed our families. But then how do we start getting information back from our families? So that is the tricky part. So just like you need to get information back from your families, we want to get information back for you from you. So did you expand what you knew? about family engagement at PBIs after the session. And what else would you like to know about? So take a minute in the chat and let us know, did, did we, what hit you? Was there an aha moment? Share it. Maybe someone else was like, oh yeah, that was new to me too. And what other information would you like or you're intrigued to know about? Two-way communication. We have to practice what we preach, right? You're our secret shopper. Involvement versus engagement. I'm glad that hit someone. Good. Yeah, several people. Very nice. The rubric. Good. Yep. Ohio State has great resources. Gathering data. Yes. Please mm. gather family engagement data and then use it. And there's a lot of ways to do it. Ownership engagement belongs yes. to the school. Woohoo! Yes, that's our favorite. Yes. And there are a <laughs> lot of, like I said, Liz was so gracious and put a lot of tools on the Padlet. Um, that you and all of the rubrics are linked there. Mm -hmm. Surveys, great. There are ways to start today. There are ways that you can you can go today and look, how are you looking at your core beliefs, even having that discussion of looking at your mission, you know, what's in our mission, what what do we believe, are we making these beliefs clear to the staff, maybe that's where you start, let's have a discussion of our core beliefs, we're value, we're not evaluating families, we're valuing what we are doing, that is so true, so here's our contact information. And if you have any questions and want to reach us in the future, please do Liz can, you know, always connect us as well. So Aaron and Jennifer, I want to thank you so much. That was outstanding. I, I was really, I was really thrilled with that information. And you had 120 people in here. 
So Wonderful. really a popular That's topic. great. And, and my bet is very well received. It was outstanding. We want to give a shout out to, let me see whose name this was. They did our cookie cutter MTSS. That's George. Yes, we did have a Beyond the Cookie Cutter with multi-tiered family engagement session last week. It will be posted on the patent website. So that was a great series where we actually brought in the Ohio State University um, researchers and they talked about it. So look for that. Um, we can put that on the Padlet too, Liz, once we get that out. Thank and you. another shout out too to just the family engagement page that's on the patent website. If you want more resources, Erin had a link to module one in there. These modules are based off the PTA national standards, which are actually undergoing a remodel. So I'm sure we'll be remodeling the modules as well. Um, but there are six modules based around the different components of those standards. And Beyond the the one, the module one on welcoming, there's there's five others. So do take a look at them if you want more information on family engagement. They are available for you to use in PowerPoint form. Use any of the activities you want. We want you to, um, you know, feel you can take ownership of those. So we're happy to have you look at those as well. I just put the link to those in the chat. Wonderful. All right. Any questions that you have for us? Well, you've got two minutes before you need to jump off. On to your next, it's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> I, did put the, I did put the playbook link back in the chat in case anyone needs it to get to the next sessions as well. Great. Then thank you all very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks everybody.